each and every single year, The Knot releases something called, wait, hold on, let me just make sure, Wedding Industry Statistics and Insights, a real wedding study of the previous year. And recently, in February, they released the numbers and findings for 2022. And I've always looked at these numbers and thought, I wonder how accurate these are. Like, I wonder how realistic these numbers are. And before we jump into the, the meat and potatoes of this week's video, if you have no idea who I am, hi, my name's Jamie Wolfer. I'm your online wedding planner. I have been doing, creating online wedding planning content for five years now, which is wild to say out loud. Um, and I've been a wedding planner for even longer than that. And my general bent and uh, a large part of my audience is basically how to plan a wedding without a real life in-person wedding planner. So I create these videos. I've got something called the master plan that serves as a substitute for a real life planner. So inherently my demographic of people who are getting married, who are watching and consuming my content are probably not going to be spending as much as perhaps maybe some of the audience that The Knot is receiving. And we'll get into those numbers in just a little bit. But I've always looked at The Knot's numbers and thought that doesn't seem accurate based on my understanding of where people are landing in the general sphere and the feedback that I get from you guys over here on this channel. So I, in my brain, I thought this would be a great idea. I decided to ask y'all for your input and do a little survey of my own. Now for clarity's sake, I have zero business being a statistician. Stat statistician, statistician. Mm. It's not my job, it's not my role, it's not what I do, but we, <laughs> So I'm going to interpret these numbers to the best of my ability. They have not been peer reviewed or whatever you need to do in order to make sure that your numbers are effective. We have had a couple people look at these stats for us, but I have to say, this is, this is not my job. It is not my strength, it's not my strong suit, but I did find some really interesting information with our own personal survey, although it's on a much smaller scale, that uh, kind of competes with a little bit of the narrative that The Knot has. Now, what I found from these findings, <laughs> found from the findings, see? I also have no business making YouTube videos. And here I am, five years later, still articulate as ever, is that our numbers don't exactly line up with a lot of the knots, which I had a feeling might happen. If you've missed it or you haven't heard me talk about it, I did this over on stories quite a bit on Instagram. I will go ahead and link it down below. If you have yet to take the survey, if you'd be so kind, jump on down there. If you've already planned your wedding, get down there. Take a look at it. Take this survey because they had like 15,000 people take theirs. We had like seven, 800 <laughs> take ours. <laughs> So our pool is inherently much smaller and our audience is probably going to be geared towards a much more DIY and or budget friendly type of sphere simply because that's the kind of content that I put out. But it does give me a little bit of pause because the kind of content that The Knot puts out caters to a different tier and a different price range of weddings in general, which is something that I've always thought might be the case. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into it even though we're five minutes into the video. It's fine. And I'm gonna do my best to have the numbers on the screen for you guys to refer to. Now, our questions and what the knots asked on their survey, I have no idea how similar they are. I have not taken both. I can only see what they have posted as the results of their survey and not the inner workings of what that looks like. So it's not gonna be like for like on quite a few things. Let's go ahead and discuss. I literally have a piece of paper with all of my notes right here. Let's discuss what we found in our survey. So hopefully you feel a little bit less alone. And if you're watching this and you're like, what on earth is happening? I really wanna stick it to the man. I don't think their numbers are accurate. And by the man, I mean the knot. And that's the whole purpose of this video. I want you to feel less alone. I don't want you to feel like you look at these gigantor numbers and you're like, this doesn't relate. I can't relate. This is not my wedding. Hopefully this will help you feel a little bit more grounded. All right. So as far as time actively planning, 52% of respondents to our survey plan for 10 to 16 months. That's like generally the time frame where a majority of the people were actively planning. We saw about 4% had done it for over two years. So really, we're not seeing a lot of long engagements here on our channel with this audience. And about a quarter of them planned it in nine months or less, which is kind of a crazy number. I mean, this is still 24%, that's a lot. This is gonna be a super number happy video, so I'm really sorry if you're not into this, but if you are, <laughs> congratulations. Um, guest count, we had about 17% of people respond say that at 50 people or less, but the biggest bulk that I saw, which I thought was absolutely fascinating, 43% of respondents had 50 to 100 guests. Whereas the knot says that their average is about 115 people per wedding, we're seeing a huge, huge amount of people having them at a slightly lower number than I thought. And then about 26% of respondents had guest count from 100 to 150. And literally we're looking at what? 
13% had 150 or more. So I wonder how the knots doing their averages on this specifically, because our numbers are looking slightly different. We asked couples taking the survey to let us know what their top priority was. And the options were guest experience, so food, entertainment, drinks, ease, making it simple and low stress, photo and or capturing it, and then look, decor, theme, style. I was surprised because I thought what would be number one was number two. <laughs> I was close, but I wasn't quite accurate. 40% of respondents said the guest experience was the most important part of their event. And following close behind was the ease of it, making it simple, making it low stress. And then about 19 for photo and or capturing and a whopping 10% cared about the look. I wonder if that has something to say with like people who take surveys, maybe they're just into numbers or into the facts and they're not as into the look of things. I personally love the look of weddings but maybe it's just not like top priority, right? That's what I'm gonna tell myself. <laughs> now the biggest stressor, this one I thought was really, really eye-opening and hopefully will help you feel a little less alone. We had four options for people to select from. Family and friends, emotional stress, actually planning, like the act of planning was the most stressful, um, sticking to the budget and vendor selection. Actually, I don't know if we had more options than this. I just know that these were the top respondents. The biggest single stressor category would be the stress of family and friends at 37%. But what I found really unique is about 58% of you were stressed by the actual planning and sticking to your budget at 30 and 28 percentages respectively, which is probably why you're here. Naturally, this kind of content is going to be pulling people in that are looking for help, trying to make wedding planning less stressful, trying to stick to a budget. The kind of content I put out there inherently is going to draw in that kind of audience as well. But I just want you guys to hear that 37% amount of being stressed out by family and friends and expectations and emotions and let that resonate with you. If you are feeling super alone, know that a massive majority of people are right there with you, friend. And only 6% were stressed out about vendor selection, which is great. I'm glad. I'd love to hear that for you guys. Next page. 80% <laughs> of our respondents used a wedding website. The clear landslide winner was The Knot by a whopping 40%, followed in second place by Zola with 24% and 18% with Joy, and then the rest are kind of scattered from there. 74% of those who took the survey said yes, they did have a registry as well. 30% with Amazon, 15% with Bed Bath & Beyond, 36% just other, just, I don't see my option listed here, so just none of the above. And only 5% with Honey Fund, which you guys, y'all are sleeping on Honey Fund if you are not using something like this. It's personally one of my favorite registries to work with because it has so much variety and so many options of what you can be doing with these funds. It's very easy, it's very simple user experience when you don't need more stuff. Uh, not sponsored, just absolutely love them. Now, of course, because inherently I would be an absolute fool. How many times have I said inherently in this video? I don't want to know. <laughs> I would be an absolute buffoon if I didn't ask people about their feedback on some of the products that I offer, such as the master plan, which is my online wedding planning course where I teach you how to plan your wedding. I'm literally your online planner. It's everything that you need from a real life wedding planner, but just simply online. I help you find your vendors. I help you plan things on time. I help you stick to your budget. Everything you need out of a wedding planner, I handle in this course. So we asked the respondents of this, how many of you use the master plan? 68% said no, which sad, sad panda. <laughs> but 32% said yes. Here's where it got me though, okay? Here's where it got me. 75% of those who said yes, they use the master plan, said it was crucial to the success of their wedding day either agreed or strongly agreed with that statement. It was crucial. They could not have pulled off a successful wedding day without it. And if that is not a glowing review, I don't know what is. Three out of four couples are saying, this is exactly what we needed and this made our lives less stressful. So if you are considering or you've heard me talk about it before, you've been on the fence about it specifically, y'all have clearly shared that the act of planning and sticking to your budget makes up for a whopping percentage of a lot of your wedding planning stressors. And we have a fantastic solution right here for you. So if you are interested in checking out the master plan, let the reviews speak for themselves, let the percentages speak for themselves. I will link it right here and in the description box below if you guys wanna watch the rest of this video uh, before committing to something like that. But we make it affordable, we make it user-friendly, and I'm there with you each and every single month as well to answer your questions live in real time, which is 
honestly one of my favorite things to do. But let's also talk about Perfect Wedding Timeline. That is the software that we partnered with to create the perfect wedding timeline. Like it's like, it's in the name. The proof is in the pudding. In the survey, we asked how many of you used it. 55% said no, 45% said yes. 78% of respondents that did use it said it was crucial to the success of their wedding day. 78%, that's even higher than the master plan. Y'all, that is wild. The amount of feedback that we're getting from people that are saying like this made my wedding day way more successful. Like it would have been less successful without these tools. How do I know this? Because I plan weddings for a living. This is what I do. So I know this online stuff works because I made it because this is what I do. So if you have been on the fence about that one as well, again, I will link it right here and down in the description box because there is a reason that we are seeing a large majority of people who have used this say this was crucial. It was absolutely crucial to the success of their wedding day. And that is what we want for all of you. We want this to be a successful, fun, joyful, stress-free, relaxing day. And that is what these products and services offer for you. So thank you for indulging me and allowing me to share those numbers with you. If you are a nerdy number person, then obviously you can see why I appreciate these numbers right here so specifically. A majority of couples said yes, that they had a bachelor or a bachelorette. We saw some pretty consistent numbers across the board of like about 16% either at one week or four weeks out, each of those at about 16%. And then wildly, 16% of people had it like a year out. Isn't that weird? So <laughs> I don't know why I found that really interesting, but I'm like a year out, that is commitment. Not, not to the relationship or whatever, but like, that's like, you're locking in your wedding party a year in advance. <laughs> 64% said yes, they did have a wedding shower. 36% said no. And usually we're seeing about 19% said three to four weeks out. 15% said eight weeks out and 18% said six weeks out. So between the eight and four week range is probably where you're gonna see the highest prevalence of having these wedding showers. 79% of respondents said that they did indeed have a rehearsal and 85% of them said they had it the night before. And if you wanna compare any of our numbers with the knots, I will leave their survey linked in the description box below as well. So they have a category that says top vendors hired and then a percentage of couples that hired this particular vendor and how much on average they spent on it. So of the people that we polled, 93% said no, they did not hire a full planner, which makes sense. Obviously, a lot of what I'm cranking out is a replacement for a full planner. We're probably not gonna see a high prevalence of people here specifically saying yes, they hired one. And interestingly enough, the knot doesn't even have a coordinator or a wedding planner listed on their top vendors, and they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different vendors listed and a wedding planner, a day of coordinator is not even on that list, at least not in this particular capacity. When it comes to a month of coordinator or day of coordinator, 60% of respondents said no, they didn't hire anybody from our survey and 40% said yes. 73% of respondents said their venue was the same place, like ceremony reception, it all happened at the same site. And again, the nature of our questions here are a little bit different, so they're not gonna match up like word for word. So we asked how far in advance people booked their venues. 10% said zero to five months. 34% said six to 11 months. 36% said 12 to 17 months. 12% said 18 to 23 months. And 6% said two years plus. So obviously we saw a lot of hype, a lot of concern, a lot of this wedding boom. And I, I did a video on it whenever people were really worried that it was gonna start happening post Rona period. And what these numbers are telling us, and these are all weddings that happened in 2022, is that these people weren't booking two plus years in advance. In fact, a majority of them were booking between, gosh, six to 17 months. That's like where we saw a bulk of people booking their venues. So we're looking at what, 70% of people were booking their venue between six and 17 months. That's a huge amount, a huge amount. Of course, that's also a really broad range, uh, but I found that really fascinating. Catering, about 85% of people that we asked booked their caterers about six to 11 months in advance. So a majority of people aren't booking them a year plus out. That's another big concern. That's another big fear is if you don't book it a year out, then you're not getting a good caterer. Now, this is my interpretation of the numbers. Obviously, I don't know if that 85% got good caterers, right? However, still 85% of people 
that didn't even book one until they were less than a year away from their actual wedding date. My guess is not all of them are gonna be terrible caterers. So hopefully that provides you with a little bit of breathing room and a little less pressure on this whole thing. 84% of respondents did have alcohol at their wedding. 99.5% of respondents hired a photographer with about 50% of them booking between the eight and 14 month window. And here's a little factoid that I found absolutely fascinating. So the Knott's average number for a photographer was $2,600. And they said that 88% of their respondents hired a photographer. Obviously in our scenario, we're seeing a much higher prevalence. 99.5% of people hired a photographer. Our numbers, I feel like are telling a different story. 49% of people that we polled spent $2,000 or less on their photographer. That's almost half of the people spent less than two grand on their photographer. Y'all, that's insane. That's getting some really good deals on photography. That's nuts. And we're seeing about 23% spent between two and 3,000 and 29% spent over 3,000. So I'm not quite sure what those numbers would look like if we averaged them all out, but it gives you a little bit of perspective. If you were looking at a photographer and you don't have a $3,000 budget, guess what? Most of the people that we pulled don't have that either, and still 99.5% of them were able to book a professional photographer to help them take photos of their wedding day. Videographer, only 45% of people said yes, they hired one, and 81% of those people spent $2,500 or less on their photographer. Whereas the Knotts numbers, don't include videographer, which tracks. 86% of our respondents said they spent $2,000 or less on their DJ. And those numbers even out to about 37% spent $500 to $1,000 and 34% spent $1 to $2,000. So we're seeing some wildly affordable rates. I just think it's wild that so many people were able to find or supply DJ and or music for their wedding for less than a thousand bucks. Now, the quality caliber, how many people are booking a professional, I'm not entirely sure, but still they're getting music handled for their wedding for $1,000 or less. 37% of respondents. That's a ton, y'all. That's over a third. Oh, and I really liked this number as well. Okay, so, because we really wanted to figure out how many people were DIYing their florals. 94% of respondents did florals, like they had florals for their wedding. 54% DIYed their florals in some capacity. Y'all, y'all are my people. <laughs> If you are on the fence or don't know if you want to be DIYing your florals, I know that sounds like a lot to take on. I'm going to toss the floral quiz up here if you want to take a look at it and uh, go take that quiz if you want to. It'll help you to kind of determine if you should be DIYing. And if you want to, what would be the best resource for you? But we really wanted to figure out how many people used fresh versus faux. 60% of respondents used only fresh, 21% used only faux, and the rest was a mix or a combination of the two. I just think that's wild. And 71% of respondents spent $1,500 or less, or less, you guys. That tells me that we are definitely seeing a huge prevalence of people DIYing or working with really, really early new to the game florists because that is a very, very inexpensive cost for florals in general. Um, a lot of florists will have something called a shop minimum, which is understandable, meaning that they really don't take on jobs that are below a certain amount because they don't really end up making much money off of them. I just found it absolutely fascinating though that so many of you are DIYing your florals and it makes me so happy. And then the last vendor category that we'll look at will be dress, like wedding dress. The average for the knot is $1,900. For us and our respondents, 17% of people spent zero to $500. 15% spent $500 to $1,000, 18% spent $1,000 to $1,500, and 34% spent $1,500 or above, which means that 66% of the people we polled spent less than $1,500. We are seeing a very drastically different number on wedding dresses from our respondents than we are seeing with some of the knots. And the final statistic that I really wanna leave you with is we asked how many of you felt like you allocated your budget just right for your event? Like you nailed it, you did good kid. Like you felt good about those numbers, you wrapped it all up, you looked at it and went, yeah, I did okay. 79% of people polled said they agreed or strongly agreed with that statement. There tends to be this idea that once you start wedding planning, you have no control of your finances. You will overspend, you will go over budget. The wedding industry is gonna get you. You're not gonna be prepared for all of these numbers. And that is a really stressful mantle to carry. But what we're seeing right here is the people that are here 
on this channel, the people that are watching these videos, the people that we are helping, 79% are saying, I allocated just right. I am satisfied with my budget. I don't feel like we went over. Don't feel like we went under. I agree or strongly agree that we allocated just right right for our budget. I said last number, but there is one more I wanna leave you with. There's a glaring little bit of information that most people love to cling to in these conversations, and that is what was your overall budget? What did you spend? And the knots number says the average is about 30,000. Now, of those that we pulled that shared their responses, 28% spent over $30,000. Everyone else was underneath that. I'm gonna repeat that one more time. Only 28% of people we polled spent over $30,000. Everyone else was underneath that. That means we are looking at 72% of the people that we are working with, that we are helping in these videos, are spending less than $30,000. So if you are balling on a budget, if you are watching these videos, if you are out there in wedding planning land and you're looking at all these giant numbers and you're like, that doesn't track, like I don't fit in with these numbers. Let me tell you, you are not alone. This survey has been such an eye-opener for us. I hope to continue to do this. I don't quite know what this will look like moving forward. I just want to keep getting more information and keep asking these questions. You guys, almost 80% of respondents said, I plan my budget well. And I'd love to think that maybe we had a little part in that. And so many of them are planning weddings for $30,000 or less. You can do this. I believe in you. I strongly encourage that you join the master plan, that you use Perfect Wedding Timeline. I created these tools and resources literally because this is what I do for a living and I know what these resources are supposed to help you achieve. And when we were looking at three out of four people agreeing or strongly agreeing that it was absolutely crucial to the success of their wedding day, y'all should probably jump on board with those. Thank you so much for those who have responded. So that's what we have for this week's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I know it was super number heavy. I highly encourage that when you are looking at stats, always ask questions, always be curious. Um, I, I'm not quite sure what this survey will look like moving forward. I wanna keep doing it. If you guys liked it, if it felt reassuring or you found it fascinating, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what your favorite number was or what you were the most surprised by. There is honestly things on this list that I was like, I had no clue, no clue that y'all would respond like that. And then there's other things where I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Uh-huh, uh-huh, y'all are DIY floral people. I totally get it. <laughs> Also, I don't know. Did we stick it to the man? Did we prove them wrong? I am not entirely sure. I feel like we're asking kind of two sets of different questions, but I think the biggest takeaway is the amount of people here that say they allocated their budget just right and the amount of people here that are planning their wedding for 30,000 or less. And if you have already gone through your wedding, please, please go take this survey. We would love to have you. I would love to keep crunching these numbers and keep asking questions because the knot is the big guy in this space and the knot has all of these numbers that they crunch, but sometimes the knot can make the little guy feel like they're all alone. And I hope that you can see from today's numbers that you absolutely are not. If you haven't done so already, jump on down there, hit that like button, and subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks for the modern day budget ride. And until next week, bye guys!